Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Clarifying Catholicism. Ordinarily, we explore theological topics, but in this series, we investigate the writings of, in my opinion, the most important little-known philosopher of the 20th century, Javier Zubiri. This is not a theological series at all whatsoever. However, if you want to do good theology, you'll need a good philosophical backbone first. So if you want to check out the rest of the episodes in this series, check the link in the description. Without further ado, on to the show. During the last couple of episodes, we looked at Javier Zubiri's critiques of both ancient philosophy and modern philosophy. His primary concern is that neither system accurately describes the relationship between sensation and intellection, which ultimately leads to a confusion between reality, being, and truth. As a refresher, the ancients and scholastics saw intellection as inherently superior to sensation. Intellection belonged to the soul, making reality and being extrinsic to the physical world. The rationalists shared the view of the intellection's superiority, but located the intellect in the mind. This tethered reality to the intelligible world and rendered all of reality as rationalizable. Immanuel Kant believed in the intellection's superiority as well, but he denied its ability to reach reality. Thus, whereas his predecessors equated being with reality, Kant divorced them from each other. Finally, Friedrich Hegel believed that the intellect shaped itself, as well as reality over the course of history. Throughout this series, we'll revisit some of these philosophers, but it is important to have given you some background for precisely what Zubiri he felt he was reacting against. With all this context, let us begin. Zubiri believes that the only place we can start building a systematic philosophy is from the moment of sensation, which he calls the moment of impression. Now, a general term that will be quite important throughout this series is moment. It is crucial to recognize that the moment of impression doesn't refer to the thing impressing itself, nor the person experiencing the impression. Rather, the time at which the thing impressing and the person impressed coincide. Anyways, the moment of impression produces exiations and actions. Exiations are involuntary biochemical responses. Think something like oxygen causing the body to breathe. We don't exactly have much control over it nor does our behavior consciously change in response to it. Actions, on the other hand, are voluntary processes that involve an awareness of the impressions. For example, a gas leak would disrupt the body's natural exiations caused by the impression of oxygen. We would notice uh, something is off. The most basic type of action humans and animals participate in is called sensible apprehension or primordial apprehension. When we primordially apprehend something, we are aware of that thing in a strictly sensual manner. Think of when you stub your toe on something. Your immediate thought isn't, ah, yes, the door caused me to stub my toe. Rather, you're probably just thinking, pain, pain, pain. That apprehension of immediate sensation, which is something all animals and infants and adults participate in, is the primordial apprehension. When we primordially apprehend something, three things happen to us. Arousal, tonic modification, and response. Arousal is pretty much an awareness of the situation. For example, the dog smells something delicious when a steak is dangled in front of it. Tonic modification changes what Zubiri calls a vital tone. The dog's appetite changes from satisfied to hungry. Response is a reaction. The dog prepares to pounce on the steak. All three of those moments occur at once. The dog's affect, vital tone, and response change at the same time it smells the delicious steak. Notice though how the dog's arousal, tonal modification, and response are all contingent on it being impressed upon by the steak. Zubiri is what we call a radical realist, meaning the way we are impressed upon and ultimately conceive of things is dependent upon the impression that real content leaves upon us. These moments of primordial apprehension I just described concern how the person or animal is internally changed by impressions. Basically, the dog was internally changed in terms of its arousal tone and reaction. Now I'd like to explain the structure of these impressions themselves. 
What exactly is it about the steak that causes the dog to change its internal behavior? Primordial apprehension is structured by three moments, all of which belong to the thing being apprehended, rather than the person apprehending the thing. The first moment that structures primordial apprehension is called affection. This occurs when the person or animal notices something, but it is the thing itself that causes how the person slash animal reacts. For example, something about the stake causes the dog's affect to change. There is also a moment of otherness, which is the distinction and identification of this sensation. Thus, the dog not only feels a change in its affect, but something about the impression allows it to identify this change in affect. The dog's mood not only changes, but it is aware of the change in its mood. It notices that it is hungry. Otherness is structured by what Zubiri calls formality and content, and you cannot have one without the other. Content is what is delivered by the impression to be formalized. Dog is given content of steak. Formality is how the content is situated or related to other content. Basically, there is something about the quality of the steak and the dog's biology that forces it to formalize it as delicious, whereas another animal that is incapable of eating steak might formalize it as poisonous. Getting back to the moments of impression, the third moment is the imposition of sensation. This is basically the force that imposes the sensation upon the dog, such as it was the dog's master dangling the steak in front of it. To summarize, the real imposes itself upon us. Imposition consists of three moments, affection, otherness, and force of imposition. Affection is merely how something brings about an awareness. Steak makes dog feel something. Otherness is what allows for the identification or distinction of that change in affect. Something about that steak makes the dog formalize its feeling of hunger as distinct or other from its other feelings. Finally, the force of imposition is what brings about that affection and otherness. The human dangling the steak in front of the dog made it feel hungry. Again, all three of these moments occur at once and they are dependent upon the real. These three moments bring about the process of sensible apprehension, which results in the arousal, tonic modification, and response from the dog. The dog is internally aroused by the stake, its feelings change, and it responds to that change in feeling. Again, primordial apprehension is the most basic apprehension humans can experience. It's just raw stimulation. We experience this as babies before we can even form concepts about the world. And this is what makes Zubiri's philosophy radically realist. For before we even attempt to rationalize the world by forming concepts about it, the way our minds are shaped are totally dependent on things like the diets of our pregnant mothers, the environments we're born into, and how our parents and teachers educate us in our earliest days. Of course, all species participate in primordial apprehension. What makes humans unique, though, is our ability to connect those raw stimulations into a network of interrelated stimuli called reality. And we will talk about reality next episode. Until then, have a great day. God bless you.